Excellent. All right, so bef before we do anything, before we go any further, well, that's a strange echo here. Yeah, we'll turn that off. It is time for Play Pose It. Okay, Play Pose It, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I do believe today's Play Pose It is going to be brought to you by none other than Praise. Praise will be bringing us today's Play Pose It. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Let me just make sure it's up and ready. And uh, then you can go over and complete it. I don't know if you're feeling, uh, if you're experiencing the same issues at home, but everyone at the school here is experiencing Wi Fi issues. It seems to be getting worse as the day goes on. So we might have some delays in today's lesson, but that's okay. We can handle it. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure this is up. <clears throat> also, there's going to be a quiz today at the end of the um, lesson, okay? Clearly, it's an open book type of quiz since you're on the internet and you'll be able to to um, do some reading, but I don't know how much that reading will help you. Um, in order to get the mark on the quiz, you probably need to um, pay attention to the lesson. Okay, so it will be a quiz on the sacraments. Yeah, I'm just gonna make sure that this is up and ready for you. My goodness, it's taking a while. Quiz will be very short, 10 questions, multiple choice, okay? Multiple choice quiz on the sacraments immediately following the lesson. I hope everybody's completed their blog post on the sacraments of initiation. If you haven't done so, please keep on top of that. Okay. And of course, play posits. A reminder that play posits, um, even if you did half of them, doesn't mean you have 50% because you add the zeros and the zeros bring the mark down significantly. So if even the two or three zeros make a big difference. Never mind more than that. So make sure you don't have any zero outstanding play posits, okay? Because that significantly lowers your mark. And it's up. So go ahead, folks. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, folks, I see most people are finished. Those who have started... Thank you very much. If you haven't completed the play pose, it's okay. There's a couple of people that haven't finished. I would ask you to stop. Please pause at this moment, and then you may continue afterwards. I also, excuse me, noticed that many people were getting question three wrong, and when I investigated, it appears that uh, you were putting the, the, the a different version of the same word, uh, which is fine. So I've so I've gone ahead and I'm, I'll be making those corrections. Okay, so if you use the same word, but you made it plural or singular, either way, you will get the correct answer. Okay, I'll make that change. I've already made some for you. <clears throat> okay, we're going to get back to the lesson now. So again, please pause your play, pose it, the last couple of people there, and get back to it afterwards. We are talking about sacraments and folks we cannot talk about sacraments unless we talk about symbols okay what are cultural symbols and the reason why we want to talk about this is because every sacrament sacramental moment comes with symbols so the catholic faith is very big on symbolism okay 
That's why when you walk into a church, you'll see a large symbol such as Jesus on the cross, whether he's crucified on the cross or ascending from the cross, it will be central or, or a major part of the, um, the, the, the view. Okay. Uh, symbols are reminders and they and they carry important messages. Um, so we're going to go over a few of the symbols in the sacraments. Okay, let's have a look at these right here. This little, this isn't sacraments. This is just another idea about symbols. In the U.S., the thumbs up sign means well done. Oops, I guess you're not hearing that. So I'm not hearing that. So let's let's find out why. What's going on here? Why not hearing that? Okay. Let's try that again. Let's try presenting. Ah, uh, there's no share audio tab. Okay, I get it. Here we go. And we'll try this again. So let's have a quick overview of what is a symbol. What are some of these other symbols, non-faith symbols? Okay. Let's have a look. Hand job. Hello. One more time, Mr. Martinick. One more time. Hand jive. Hand jive. The top seven common American hand gestures that can get you in trouble abroad. In the U.S., the thumbs up sign means well done, or is commonly used by hitchhikers. But don't use it in Greece, Russia, Sardinia, or West Africa, because you'll be insulting the recipient with a hearty up yours. Many people use this sign to denote victory or peace in America. But use it in Great Britain, Australia, Ireland, or New Zealand, and you'll basically be dropping the F-bomb. Be careful with this. In the US, this sign means everything is hunky-dory. But in Russia, Brazil, Turkey, and the Mediterranean, it means something very different. Something along the lines of, you are a homosexual. In France and Belgium, it means the recipient is a worthless zero. If you're in Greece, don't tell someone to stop by also holding up your hand, palm out, and all five fingers at attention. You'd be telling them to go straight to hell. Jenna Bush was televised flashing this symbol in Norway to show her pride for Texas, not realizing that she was inadvertently telling the entire Mediterranean that their spouses were being unfaithful. The sign means cuckold and is popular in Spain, Portugal, Greece, Colombia, Brazil, Albania, and Slovakia. If you go to the Philippines, whatever you do, don't tell someone to come here by curling your finger forward and motioning repeatedly unless you want to get arrested. It's considered to be a gesture befitting only usage on a dog and is punishable with jail time if used on a person. Placing both hands out, palms down, fingers outstretched to settle a crowd or to tell people to wait is commonplace in the US. But in Greece, it means eat sh So be careful using those seven hand gestures abroad. For more information, please visit www.pimslerapproach.com. The leaders in audio-based... All right. Symbols obviously can be powerful or they can be misunderstood but there are some symbols that are never misunderstood in the world of catholicism okay and that is because the catholic church uh is based on universal principles of universality in fact the word catholic means universal so when we celebrate baptism for example and candidates uh, and the babies are wearing white Everybody in the world, it doesn't matter which country, where you're from, which hemisphere, 
Like every Catholic will understand the white means new, clean, pure. Okay? The white robe, the white garment. All right? There's also the special candle that is lit. Okay? And um, this, of course, is the symbol of resurrection. All right? We also have the, um, for the confirmation, we have, um, besides the, the uh, like I was talking last week, how the priest puts the hand um, on the face, okay, it used to be a slap, but then it got more harsh over the years, and they kind of stopped that, right? They have, um, sometimes, they, they actually put, brought in doves, okay? A dove is a is a is a Catholic universal symbol for peace and the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, and then there's also the fire, right, denoting like the the, the Holy Spirit's power. Okay, um, and it is said that the uh, the flames appeared on top of the apostles' heads after Jesus um, left, and the Holy Spirit came in. Okay. Then we have the um, Holy Communion and the Eucharist, and uh, I'm sure many of us are familiar with the uh, symbols, but take a look closely. Let me make this a little bigger here. And you have um, the various things on the table, on the altar. They're always the same things, right? You go to the, you go to the uh, church and the priest always has these same things on the altar, okay? The, the, the vessel, um, that, that, that they would contain um, uh, the wine and, and water, which is used to, to, to you know, mix there, and it becomes the, the blood of Christ. Um, the, the, of course, the famous chalice, but the, don't forget the, uh, the, the dish, okay? And, and these things, and then the cloth, right? So all, these things are particularly, um, and they're made of pure materials, all right? Usually gold, okay? Um, and these are the things that handle the body and blood of Christ. Okay, and then you'll always see the priest scraping, um, you know, uh, swishing the the putting extra um, wine into the um, where the, uh, the, the, the uh, putting the extra crumbs uh, from the host into the chalice with the wine and then swishing it around and drinking it, making sure every single crumb is is um consumed okay yes um in reconciliation you know is is actually uh you know um, a very uh the the, the symbolic uh, uh room if you will or or the closed space the, the privacy it's just a conversation between you and god right the priest is, is merely the 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 conduit okay to god um then we also have have um the ashes for for ash wednesday reminding us you know uh the we should we are to be humble right from ashes we came ashes to ashes we will return right we will disintegrate back into ash okay <clears throat> And there's various other symbols. Uh, you've got the symbols of um, of healing, okay, and the special um, blessed oil for anointing of the sick, particularly if it's uh, if it's an anointment that's happening in, in, at the final stages of life, okay. Now, holy orders. If you've ever been to a, a ceremony with a person uh, or uh, who's becoming a priest, there is. Um, the, the, the laying of the hands and often the priest is lying or the candidate's lying on the ground spread out and they are um, it, it is an extremely humble um, posture they are dedicating themselves fully to God and to the church okay and then the bishop you know through the bishop's hands come the whole comes the Holy Spirit um, for the for the new 
priest, okay? Priests also take um, vows, very symbolic. So symbols can be not just things you see, but symbolic words are spoken. Um, vows of chastity and abstinence. Right. Again, once again, the oil, you know. Um, and oil is, why oil? Why, why are they using oils um, as a symbol? Of anointment. Well, you know, if anybody that's eaten anything greasy and you got oil on your shirt, you'll know that it's something that stains. It's it's a permanent, right? So when you are anointed with oil, it is a, it is like a stain. It is a permanent thing that becomes a part of you. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Now we know the symbols of matrimony. Should This is, of course, uh, a sacrament that may not occur to everyone. Just, just like holy orders and vocation, you, you, you may not choose to spend your life with a significant other. Um, but if you do, there are words spoken, symbolic words. We, we all recognize, I'm sure, some version of them. Those vows, right? vow meaning pro, uh, vow meaning promise. And then we have the rings, the exchange of the rings. Okay. Symbols of this um, new relationship, right? Each person gets a ring um, to let uh, to remind to remind themselves, right, of of the relationship, and to remind other others, right, other people too. Okay, oh, gone too far. Okay, so those are just some of the symbols for um, the sacraments. But let's go back to the sacraments themselves. Okay, let's go back to the sacraments. And last I left us, um, we were talking about the sacraments of initiation. And this whole idea of initiation. Um, baptism, Eucharistic confirmation. And it happens over time. In a pro it used to happen once, once a year, and sometimes it would be adults. You know, a 21-year-old would they really get all three. But over time, it's uh, progressed to this order. And the order happens during, you know, your parents make the first decision for you to begin the process. Then you, at some point, have this um, Eucharist and Holy Communion. And then when you're a teenager, a teen, an adolescent, the, the church historically has deemed you old enough and mature enough to make a decision to confirm your belief. Now... If you're old enough to decide yes, it means you're old enough to decide no. Okay, so if you have that freedom in your in your family, in your home, you know, but uh, I don't think uh, our society today has moved a little bit um, differently. Uh, children tend to be children longer, okay, much longer. So um, when you're 14, 13, 14, 15, you, you aren't, in today's society, you're not really an adult, right? In fact, officially, you're not an adult until you're either 19 or 21, depending where you are, uh, or 18. You know, you can't vote 14 year old, so you can't participate in, in the decisions of the country where you live. Uh, you're probably still under your parents' care or your guardian's care, and they make decisions for you, important decisions. You know, you're starting to get some decision making courses to take and some stuff like this but maybe some of you most of you are, are for most of the big decisions your parents are making for you including confirmation so it's a kind of a, um, an interesting dilemma okay but, but uh, nevertheless so baptism uh, there's videos included in each of these I'm not going to play each of them I'm just going to play one or two um, but I'll post this so you can watch after Okay, baptism. I, I don't think it needs a lot of explanation, but it's the it's the initial, um, you know, reminder that we are born without sin. Um, uh, we are born clean and pure. We are entering the church, and now we have an opportunity to to live our life at the fullest. We also have opportunity and the, and the ability to choose not to um, um, live. You know. As God intended, uh, and that's and that's and that's just the choice we have. That's the that's the beauty of God's love is you always have this choice, right? 
Because you can't really love someone unless you have a choice to love them, right? You can't be a good person unless you can be a bad person. Without the ability to be bad, there is no ability to be good, right? They're, both have to exist in order to for one to be possible, at least one to be possible. So, so baptism. But let's move to um, Eucharist, okay? And, you know, the Eucharist is the moment that Jesus is now accepted into, into your body. So this, this models the Last Supper, right? We had the Last Supper. Um, and, it, and by taking the Eucharist, you are acknowledging Jesus' um, the, the history of Jesus' story and Jesus' um, holiness, right? His divinity. Okay, so um, we 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 follow how uh, Jesus' words. Take this, um, eat it. This is my body. This is my blood. Some churches and some some practice, some Christian practices actually share the wine uh, or the, the 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 consecrated blood of Christ, and um, and then we this nourishes us, right? Provides this nourishment and healing. Right, this helps in the healing process. That's why there's always Eucharist following reconciliation. Right, if it's like a, a big ceremony for reconciliation, there will be a Eucharist available. Right. Okay. Now, confirmation is probably the one you remember uh, most because it's you know it just happened, um, and um, for, for 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 many of you, let's have a look at instead of me explaining, let's have a look at this blurb here by the. by the professionals. Why do I have to get confirmed if I was already baptized as a baby? Have you ever tried sitting on a stool with only two legs? It doesn't work very well. A stool needs at least three legs, otherwise it'll fall over. Well, you can kind of think of confirmation in the same way. Confirmation is one of the three sacraments of initiation in the Catholic Church. The sacraments of Christian initiation, baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist, lay the foundations of every Christian life. The faithful are born anew by baptism, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation, and receive in the Eucharist the food of eternal life. So it's a three-legged stool, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Without confirmation, you won't have the support you'll need to sustain you on your journey of faith. And in some ways, confirmation can be seen as the beginning of that journey. Think of the apostles, for example. Many of them had been around Jesus for years and had even been baptized. But it wasn't until Pentecost that the Holy Spirit came upon them and took them to the next level of faith. They were no longer merely receivers of God's Word, they were doers of God's Word. That's how it works with confirmation. The Church sees this sacrament as kind of a personal Pentecost for each of us, the beginning of our mission to live a Christian life. And because we know that doing that can be quite difficult at times, at our confirmation, we receive the right tools to help us on our journey of faith. And by tools, I mean the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Courage. This gives us the strength to stand up for what is right in spite of popular opinion. Wisdom. This allows us to see God working in the world always and everywhere. Understanding. By which we are given a deeper insight into the truths of our faith. Knowledge, not quite the same thing as wisdom. With this gift, we are able to recognize God's purpose for our lives. Right judgment, sometimes called counsel. This allows us to recognize the difference between right and wrong and choose right. Reverence, sometimes called piety. This gives us the ability to recognize our need for God. Fear of the Lord. 
This isn't a fear of punishment, but rather recognition of the enormity and glory of God and our desire to do right by Him. So as you can see, baptism is a great start, but without confirmation, you're missing out on a lot. In fact, these gifts of the Holy Spirit were promised to us by Jesus Himself. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. That's how Jesus prepared His disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. Today, we also need to prepare for the Sacrament of Confirmation. For starters, you'll need to take a Confirmation class. These are usually offered as part of religious education programs at most parishes. Now, since there is no set age for confirmation, it varies widely depending on the diocese, anywhere from infancy to 16 years of age. But if you're older than that, don't worry about being stuck in class with a group of teenagers. Many parishes offer confirmation preparation for adults as well. And because this sacrament is about taking Christian values out into the world, there is often a service component involved. Now, you don't have to do all this on your own. Everyone preparing to be confirmed gets to choose a sponsor someone who's already confirmed and actively practicing their Catholic faith. A sponsor is a sort of mentor figure who can offer you guidance and prayers. So it's probably best to choose someone who you feel comfortable talking to about spiritual matters and someone who most likely will be a part of your life after you're confirmed. You might be given the option of choosing a confirmation name. Historically, a believer received a new name to mark a new phase in their life. So again, this reminds us that confirmation is the start of something new. Usually, the name chosen is that of a saint that you admire and hope to emulate. This helps to deepen your bond with the larger faith community. Another indication that confirmation brings about a more fully realized membership in the body of Christ is that the diocesan bishop is usually the minister of this sacrament. The bishop's presence reminds us that those being confirmed are now sent into the world to spread the good news, just as Jesus sent forth the apostles to continue his mission. Now that we've talked about what confirmation is, let's be sure we know what it's not. Confirmation is not a rite of passage. It's not the same as a bar mitzvah or other similar coming of age rites for young people. It's also not just another religious hoop to jump through. Confirmation is the completion of the grace we received at baptism and the invitation to mature in the Christian life. And it's certainly not graduation from church. Yes, confirmation completes your Christian initiation, but it is just the beginning of a life of bringing the Christian message out into the world. Remember, like all the sacraments, confirmation is transformative. It changes who we are and who we are capable of becoming. We move from hearing God's word to sharing it. Confirmation gives us the grace that makes it possible to truly live a Christian life. All right. The part about the name is interesting. I don't think we do that anymore. I don't think we pick names anymore. Hmm. All right, let's move on. So we have um, reconciliation, folks. Reconciliation. Confession. Forgiveness. Um, this goes hand in hand a little bit with um, anointing of the sick. So, so I'm, I'm going to just give us a, just a couple of minutes of this video here. These are the two I'll show no. No, actually, I will skip this one for interest of time. Um, but reconciliation, uh, I think it's self-explanatory. What's important to note is you are you are you are um, reconciling uh, with God, right? It, the priest is simply there to be the conduit between you and you and God. Okay, and then of course you have the the penance, or or you know, it's just a, a, a small symbol of your um, repentance, right? Usually some prayers and whatnot, okay? Um, anointing of the sick and last rites. Um, this sort of a last chance to, to receive God's blessing, an opportunity to, to be able to join, join the Lord. Um, 
should that sickness lead to death. And holy orders. This one I will play for us because I would like to just focus um, for a minute on holy orders and something that's not talked about enough in um, as an option, right? I mean, in careers class, there is no discussion about holy orders and a career in the church. It's kind of odd, you know. Um, it's not in the curriculum because the curriculum is not faith-based. Um, the ministry curriculum, but uh, and I teach career sometimes, and I, and I forget, and I skip over this, and I feel bad. So um, I'd like to present this because this is a very important. Now, of course, if you don't receive the call to be a, a, a service member, I mean that's a different story. Not everybody will. But some might, but they might not listen or hear the call because we don't we don't talk enough about this, right? So let's take a minute to go over holy orders here. Catholic and I'm getting married next year. With everything else I have to worry about, why is it important that I have a Catholic wedding? Oh, wrong, wrong video. These days, the sacrament of matrimony or marriage in the Catholic Church can raise a lot of questions for a bride and groom to be. Everything from why does it have to be a Catholic wedding to why does the church require marriage preparation to Ah, if you want to answer the answer to those questions, you can watch this video um, next time uh, when I post it. Okay, but where's my holy orders video? Hmm, what have I done? Oh, there it is. What happened there? The right of ordination to the priesthood is one of the oldest in the Catholic Church. Some of the gestures practiced today were performed in the first century. The rite is performing the ordination of bishops, priests, and deacons. It's always presided by bishops and it takes place between the scripture readings and the Eucharist liturgy. It begins with a bishop calling each candidate by name and each candidate responding in Latin, ad sum, which means I'm present. The candidates respond to some questions or sometimes make a pledge. In the case of the future priest, they make a promise of chastity and obedience to the bishop. Then the candidates prostrate on the floor in a gesture of humility and supplication. The people attending kneel and sing the litany of the saints and they're asked to help the candidates. Then comes one of the most essential acts of ordination, the laying of hands. The bishop ordains each man by laying his hands on the candidate's head. It's a moment when the Holy Spirit descends upon the candidate through the sacramental action. Another important act is the consecration prayer. Following this act, the deacon becomes a priest. Then start a series of rites called explanatory. In the case of the episcopal ordination, the bishop anoints the head and places the mitre, the ring and the crozier to the new bishop. In the case of the priest, the bishop always anoints their hands with oil because they are the hands that bless, the hands that will ordain the hands that will consecrate. That's why they do the anointing of hands. The deacon, on the other hand, is given a Bible because he will be the minister of the proclamation of the gospel. The conclusion of the rite varies depending on the traditions of each country. In Spain, people approach the new priests to kiss their hands, and in Italy and Germany, they approach them to receive their blessing. right of ordination to the priesthood okay folks there you go there you have it a closer look at all of them um okay and uh again the 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 videos i skipped over will be available to you and we will have more discussion about um 
uh, marriage and matrimony in future lessons on family life. It is time now for the quiz, the 10 question quiz, okay, about the sacraments. I'm going to post them and then I will give you 10 minutes to do the 10 question quiz. So the 10 minutes left, 10 question quiz. Now, of course, if it takes you a little longer, that's okay too. Okay. Let me just come up here and make sure I get this posted properly. And the quiz works very uh, simply. You, you will have 10 situations and you will choose which one, which sacrament goes with which, which situation. Okay, folks, the quiz is now posted. Please take the opportunity to complete the quiz. I would expect you to be able to complete in the next 10 minutes. At that point, we will be finished. So I will, um, uh, I will say goodbye right now and remind everybody, continue working on your CPT, especially the social media posts. Um, I know that the slides are going well. I can see that in class. But um, as you come into class for cohort A tomorrow, I believe, we will, I will take a closer look and come around to, and take a look to see how your slides are looking. Okay? Enjoy. Bye for now. All right, bye, sir. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.